Vielen Dank, guten Tag. Ich kann als Redner mit Dr. Oetting nicht mitmachen. bin zwar deutscher Herkunft und deutschsprachig aufgewachsen, habe aber noch nie in Deutschland gelebt und muss zugeben, dass mein Deutsch seitdem einiges verrostet ist. Also jetzt die ganze Sprache auf Englisch zu halten, wäre peinlich. Daraufhin, if you permit, I will switch and speak in English. Um, and it will allow the few people wearing headsets to actually take them off. So, let me talk about social and, and, and about eBay and first put social in context. Technology today is leading the biggest innovation and the biggest consumer behavior shift that we have seen in decades. Our global CEO is quoted sometimes as saying that he expects more change to come in the next three years than in the past 15 combined. And this isn't the technology driving the shift. The technology is being made available to consumers. It is consumers fundamentally driving it. And I will just very quickly enumerate some of them. The most obvious one and probably the oldest one now, and you heard it from Spotify earlier, is digital. The consumption of media, movies, books, music, is switching digital and it's doing that very fast. The other most obvious one, and maybe the most dramatic one, is mobile. Um, eBay itself assumes that by the end of this year we will have done 16% of our global revenues on mobile devices. That was zero just two years ago. And then there's local. And it's actually the combination between digital and mobile and local which makes it very interesting. You can now go into a shop, do an image recognition search for an item, look for that item on the internet and then either buy it in a nearby shop because you just found out it's cheaper somewhere nearby or you can buy it on the internet. And then there's social. Everybody's trying to crack social. And so I'll speak a little bit about social, but the one thing I will say is I don't think anyone can claim to have cracked social yet. I certainly don't pretend to have the arrogance to say eBay has, and I don't think anyone else has either. We don't know what the social silver bullet is. And I will share some of the things we're testing and trying in social, but by no means do we think we have yet found a golden recipe to harness the power that social inherently has and potentially will end up becoming for commerce companies. But let me start with a very simple question, which is, does anyone here know which one is one of the most popular, largest and biggest social commerce Facebook pages? The one brand that has the most social likes. Any guesses? It's Victoria's Secret. The um, cynicist in me would argue that maybe it's not just because of the power of the brand. And as a matter of fact, they have almost 20 million likes. This is a global presence. This isn't a Facebook Germany, Facebook US page. It's a global <laughs> Facebook presence. But when you actually look at the amount of people that are talking about Facebook, it's only 1.8%. And that's the point. Obtaining likes is one thing. But much more important is to actually obtain the likes in an engaging fashion and make sure that users are following you because you're offering them an engaging reason to be following you in the first place. And so I certainly believe that organic engagement is much more important than paid or acquired likes. We're seeing from a marketing perspective many brands spending millions of dollars on Facebook in order to drive likes. We could be running a, I don't know, Ferrari sweepstake on the eBay homepages or on the eBay Facebook pages and we'd probably drive likes like crazy. I'm not interested in those consumers being the ones that are really engaging with us. And so one of the things that we try to do, this is just our German, we don't have a global presence, we have country pages. Our German page, I think this is snapshot from a few days ago, has 600,000 people liking it at a much higher engagement rate. And we regularly track engagement Yes, the number of likes is an interesting factor, but what really interests us is what percentage of those people are talking about the brand, commenting on the brand, or sharing commentary on that brand. Now, these are some of the things that we have achieved this year on Facebook Germany. And as I said earlier, I, I don't have the arrogance to say this is, this is great and that this is something that we should be celebrating, that the job is done, but at least it gives me confidence to say that we're onto something. We have, in Germany, increased our fan base six times since January of this year to September of this year. And most importantly, what we're seeing is that we are attracting on Facebook a profile of user that is not our typical user. And so when you think of future user acquisition, and I will read out some of the numbers, I apologize, I realize some of this is, is almost impossible to read in the back. 
Um, when 38% of our site visitors in Germany are female, 51% of the people we're engaging on the Facebook page of eBay are female. And so that as an audience, as a target audience, is particularly attractive to us, and it is easier for us to acquire them via Facebook than through our historic user base. The same thing happens with age. Only 37% of our typical user base is in the age bracket of 18 to 34. However, 65% of people engaging with us on Facebook are. And the way we started shifting some of those statistics is by fundamentally switching the mix of content we were offering to the users. And so you will, you will see the pie chart and you will see there's just a shift in colors. I don't need to go into the detail, but what it means is that we are constantly experimenting with new types of content to see what works and what doesn't work. And what we've managed to do this year is significantly increase the number of engagement as well. So the average number of likes or average number of shares or average number of, of poll participations has increased by almost 2,700%. And we now have um, significantly more engagement levels than Amazon, who's one of the key competitors we benchmark ourselves against in Germany. And then at the very bottom, we're also managing the number of clicks that go directly from Facebook to eBay. Now, someone this morning was referring to right brains and left brains. I'm a right brainer. I don't care about the ROI. I don't think anyone has figured out to really measure the monetization and the actual models of what a Facebook like is worth or not. Um, you can put all the mathematicians against it and all the tracking technologies. But what my gut tells me is that generally engagement on Facebook is going to be a good thing and something we should continue investing in. So how have we achieved some of these results? And let me just break out some of the elements that we're doing in the space of engagement on Facebook. And basically talk about aggressive trial and error innovation, diversified content strategies, and about vertical enthusiast campaigns. There are many other things that we consider very strategic about a presence in social media that I will just refer to quickly but will not talk about. The first one is social customer support. Precisely being able to rapidly intercept potential negative word of mouth and deal with that swiftly, and ideally even turn it into positive word of mouth, is something we're investing a lot of effort on. Corporate and employee communication. The generations of employees we're now hiring no longer really care about on stage all hands or CEO emails to the entire employee base. <coughs> Millennials have very different ways of communicating than the X and the Y generations, and so obviously we use social for our internal communications. Social commerce, by which I mean actually empowering commercial transactions via the social networks, is something else we spend a lot of time on. And then maybe the most promising, but still somewhat elusive potential of social is the amount of data that it will and can give you about your user base and the extent to which you can then exploit that by combining and merging it with your own data for the elements of personalization. But as I said, I will not talk about those. I will, I will mostly rest on the engagement space. So let me talk about aggressive trial and error innovation. We have to benefit by having several Facebook pages in different countries in Europe to use our European country portfolio to very aggressively try and test different technologies, different applications in several countries, and then cross-pollinate what works among them. This is just one example. We're currently beta testing an app in the UK called Help Me Shop, where a user on eBay can select a variety of items. In this case, the example happens to be you know, a, a phone with two types of watches. But it could be five different types of sofa, or it could be four different dresses. And where you then share those four or five pre-picked items with your Facebook social graph and allow your friend and your network to help you choose whatever you want to shop. Now, I give this a 10% chance of succeeding. It may bomb. It doesn't matter. If we spend a couple of thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of euros a year developing these kind of applications and learning about what works and doesn't work, the sheer benefit of learning by far outweighs the eventual benefit of one or another application taking off. And this is just one example of the many, many applications we're testing. Let me talk about content very quickly and, and how we are learning that content is king. But getting content right is very, very difficult. And so here's one example where we use a very direct tone of voice with a very direct instruction to our users, please do something. In this case, you know, please like if you agree that the dog is a man's friend. And then we measure to what extent some of these work or don't work. We do use our community for item curation. One of the biggest challenges on eBay is we have 350 million items live on the site at any point in time worldwide. 
most of the eBay users don't complain about the lack of selection, but the fact that the selection is so overwhelming, it takes them a long time to navigate and find what they really want. And so in some cases, in order to get better at curation, we go out to our community and ask them to help us choose whether certain trends or certain items are popular or not. In this case, are you liking shoe boots? I believe the answer was yes, they seem to be in. <laughs> this is one that always surprises us. We celebrate the uniqueness of the items available on eBay. These old toys happen to be the most popular clicked on and liked posting we have ever posted. We have given away five euro coupons, we have done all sorts of giveaways. The only item that we have ever managed to get, 25,000 clicks within less than an hour in Germany, where these, I think Bonchichis or Monchichis, I, I, I forget. Um, I'm sure my sister has some of them, but uh, I certainly didn't. Pop culture is very important. Sometimes simply celebrating with your community a fact without claiming every, any credit on it and without in any way trying to commercially extract value from it is extremely important. It just means you're there with them. You're part of the life and you're celebrating the very same facts that they would be celebrating. And as you may imagine, this was that, that golden Saturday um, when, when um, Britain won, I think, 16 medals in a single Saturday. And it was just very important for us to share that moment with our, with our community. Clearly, we do use the segmentation powers and capabilities of social for rewards, for coupons, and for any other sort of um, more commercial activities. And we also are using increasingly our social channels for segmentation. Um, eBay as a multi-channel retailer and a multi-category retailer has pockets of enthusiasts. We have fashion enthusiasts, we have motors and, and parts and accessories enthusiasts, we have electronics enthusiasts, and so we try and create channels and voices to be able to address every single one of them individually um, and make sure that they find a, if you will, a like voice in, in some of our communications with them. And then quick and engaging polls, just very quick reactions, etc. So, so again, I'm not, I'm not standing here saying we figured out or cracked the recipe of content. And by the way, it is so fluid. If we had cracked it this week, it is likely to change again next week. But we are constantly trying to stay in touch with our community and figuring out what works and what doesn't. And also not getting too fussed about measuring the immediate ROI and, and financial impact, but really concentrating on the engagement. And then last but not least, the vertical enthusiast campaigns. Social is an incredibly powerful tool to make sure that you stay in touch with, with what sometimes can be very clearly defined in niche target audiences, sometimes broader. And here's some examples. Fashion is one of the categories which is uh, showing the strongest growth, not only at eBay, but in e-commerce generally. And obviously it is a category that lends itself for social interaction. So one of the examples in, 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 um, in Germany for a PR lookbook that we generate for every single season, instead of casting a model, we actually cast bloggers. And so the blogger herself is part of that lookbook, but obviously then helps us share her experience. And we are, are able to very quickly disseminate um, that imagery among many, many, many other viewers rather than only relying on our own push mechanisms. Or at the bottom, more recently, using celebrities um, and having them film for us and then have, have YouTube channels pushed out. In the motors category, for example, uh, it says this video is unlisted. It was as of this morning. This is a press release we just launched in the UK this morning. In the UK, we reconverted an old milk crate bus and broke the Guinness World Record of speed for milk crate buses going at 77 miles an hour. But what's interesting is we allowed our community through social interaction to actually pick and select the parts and accessories that were used to put together the new engine for this truck. And so this is really a community built truck, which was then piloted by a professional pilot. And very similarly at the bottom in Germany, we have been running a campaign all this year called Deutschland Schraubt. I will not translate into English. Um, <laughs> Deutschland. Deutschland uh, is exactly the same concept. We are allowing our community to basically select and drive a certain year-long campaign, which ultimately will lead to old cars being um, completely remodeled with parts and exercises. So just some examples of what we're doing. Um, certainly the signs we're seeing this year um, encourage us in continuing down this way, but no, we have not yet cracked the silver bullet. And with that, I thank you for your time.